Viewer discretion is advised for this Love Theme podcast. The content may contain discussions and sensitive topics related to relationships, dating, and love. Some content may not be suitable for all listeners, especially those uncomfortable with open and vulnerable conversations. We encourage our listeners to practice self-care and to reach out to a trusted friend or professional if they need support. You have no friends, you have me. Welcome to the Lost Lover Boy Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Lost Lover Boy Podcast. And today's episode is pretty special to me. It's been a long time coming with um, this idea of Dimitri wanting a daughter. Um, I'm a, before I get into it, let me, let me get this out the way first. To all you newcomers, if this is your first video, welcome to the house that the lovers built. Welcome to the Lost Lover Boy podcast. I was actually, you know, um, told to start up a podcast because a lot of people took my advice or took my word on a couple different things. And i um, honored, fortunate, blessed, you know, that it can resonate with so many people, help so many people, help heal so many people. Very, very fortunate. Um, so that's where this podcast stems from. If you're new, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know you new. You know what I'm saying? Let's 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 lock in together here. For those returning, thank you again. Thank you as always for the constant support, for the constant engagement. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart, and you know this. I try to tell you in every way possible, um, and I will continue telling you guys in every way possible. Now today, like I said, today is a very special episode for me because I've always wanted a daughter. Now. I remember Logan was well, well. Logan was conceived, right? Um, we did the whole gender reveal thing, and we did like a firework reveal. And I remember like driving to Indiana to get the fireworks or whatever, because Chicago, that shit not legal. Um, but I remember going to the fucking doctor's appointment, and they telling us like they get, she doing a little ultrasound thing to see the gender, and she wanted to keep her secret. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I bullshit you not. I peaked before we even left the fucking, before we even left the little, you know, ultrasound center we was in. I I looked, and I told her I didn't. You know, forgive me for lying. I was I, I lied. Um, I looked like a motherfucker. I just so desperately wanted a girl, so 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 badly, so so badly. So you can imagine when I walked out of this ultrasound place and that motherfucker said, "Oh boy," I didn't know what to do with myself. I I I was I was thrown. I was um, caught off guard. I was shocked like a motherfucker. Um, but in this episode, I ain't to tell you why. Um, I love my son. If y'all know, you you know me, Logan is a part of me and everything I do. Like, I'm always on his chaperone on his field trips. I know all the kids in his class. I ain't fucking around. Very active father, huh? A very active father. So, Miss Wiley, get you one of them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, so... That's just who I am as a person. I'm always going to be active, but I never envisioned having a little bitty mini me. Like I've never been a man who was like, man, I got to have a junior. Like I had the opportunity to name Logan after me. I just didn't want to. And I said in the song, um, Letter to My Best Friend, I gave you your own name because you stronger. I gave you your own because you stronger than this name I claim. And I truly mean that. Like from the bottom of my heart, like... I'd hate to be like LeBron James Jr. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of pressure, you know, floating around on that young man. And I didn't want to give my son that same pressure. Um, not to say I'm LeBron or anything remarkably close, but um, yeah, I hope to be. You know what I'm saying? I hope LeBron know my name one day. But even bigger than knowing my name, even even greater than knowing my name to know my offspring's name, to know Logan's name, come on now. I did my job as a father, and that's all I'm saying. But... Like I said, I had peaked before we even left the fucking ultrasound center. Ah, I had to note in my pocket. She trusted me with it, which is crazy. That was fucking crazy. But um, I peaked before we left the ultrasound center. I couldn't help it. Man, listen, when I tell y'all I envisioned having a daughter since I was like fucking in third grade. Now, 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 I know I was a kid, you know, um... Talking about having a kid, but that's just what it was. Like, I was coming up with gr little girl names like What a Fit with Wiley and da da da. All these names, you know, as a kid and writing them down. And, you know, I found some beautiful names, you know. Dakota's still probably my favorite at the moment. Um, Dakota Wiley, I could call her Cody, you know what I'm saying? I just think that's fire. Um, but I found a, a bunch of other beautiful names. I just, I was salty. 
I was salty, y'all. I ain't gonna hold you. I was so fucking salty. For like, I think we did it. Like we went to like the ultrasound place on like a Thursday or something like that. And the fucking gender reveal was like on a Saturday. So I drove to Indiana, got the fireworks. So I, y'all know me. I told the lady behind the register, like, yeah, it's a gender reveal. This is the gender. You know what I'm saying? Can I also have like a neutral color? Like a color that's gonna throw it off. And you know what's funny? The video to this gender reveal is still the first thing in my phone. I got new phones since then. Wait, a couple new phones. But this video is still number one priority in my phone. Oh, let me see. Maybe y'all could like hear the excitement in this video. But I got to the store and um, the lady was like, you know, you don't know what it is. Well, congratulations and da 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 And I'm sitting there mad in the motherfucker. I'm sitting there knowing it's a little booger nose little boy. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I was fortunate. With whatever, as long as it was a healthy child, that's really all that mattered most, you know. But, um, yeah, I was salty though. So I ended up buying two boxes. I bought the blue box and I bought like a a um, silver box. One that motherfuckers that I was popping. I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, I wanted people to be upset with me. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I'm built this way. I just wanted everybody to be like, you know. But here's the here's the audio. I don't know if you can hear it. Let's check it out. You might hear it. Yeah, here. Bunch of people. Her family, my family. That's my little brother and uh my my nephew and shit. So, so like look. I, we was excited in the motherfucker. But I knew I just knew it was gonna be like a dud. You know what I'm saying? Y'all hear me yelling, team boy? Everybody like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't know if y'all actually, if the audio actually came through, but if it did, if it didn't, it was just a bunch of like, bro, it was a good, good moment, good time, you know what I'm saying? Even though I was having a boy, I was still like, in the mind, like, you know, a healthy child is all that matter. I just never saw myself having a little boy, ever. And, like, I got to be, like, one of the roughest daddies with this dude. Like, I, I, I beat him up constantly. I'm probably worse on my nephew. My nephew's a little older, and all we do is fight. Like, he just run in the room and hit me in the nuts and shit, you know? Um, but I, if you know me, to know me is to know I love children. Like, I, I am um, a true advocate of, like, the children are our future. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, don't, I don't even do it because they're our future. I do it because, like, you know, they're innocent. That 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 youth is where you still have that imagination, where you still have that dream to be a fighter, fighter, a police officer. Like on Logan's field trip today, I was asking him, "What you want to be when you grow up?" He told my ass, "A police officer." He said, and this is what he said, his exact words. He said, "So if anybody mess with my daddy, I'm gonna lock him up." That's exactly what he said. As we sit in a eating our lunch at the table, you know what I'm saying? Like, I will always go above and beyond for mine. I, 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 it's, just, it's just who I am. It's just what I do. Um, but yeah, I thought I would have a girl. My whole life I envisioned to have a girl, but let me tell you why. See, the thing about it is, I was truly under the impression that like having a girl would be good to her. Like most, most, I'm not gonna say all, most men want mini me's so they, they can see this carbon copy of themselves. Me personally, I wanted to see a carbon copy of who I was in love with. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. I wanted to see a carbon copy of my best friend. I wanted to see a carbon copy of, I wanted two of them motherfuckers. You telling me I could love her this hard and then boom, okay, cool. Give me another one. Give me three more if you got to. And I'm going to love them all the same way. I always envision myself being like Kobe Bryant. Girl, dad of the year. I, that's just what I envision. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, you know, Miss Wiley, I pray to God when we get like engaged, I'm just like, you know, I'm shooting the club up immediately. So, uh, you know, if you ain't really, you know, ready for that, don't say yes on the engagement because I'm shooting the club up immediately. You know what I'm saying? We better have our wedding within nine months so you like, you ain't swole in the dress. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. Me and my Miss Wiley might have to talk about that. But, but I, I I've always envisioned myself with a big family, a huge family. You know what I'm saying? Like multiple. So when I'm old and like gray, they gonna love me like unconditionally. 
Like, I'm going to be Papa Wiley. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to be like the coolest granddaddy on the yard. Yes, I envision myself showing up to my daughter's school, like, in my Nike tech and all her friends. Like, yo, daddy, so fine. Yeah, that, that, that's what... that's. That's what the epitome of fine was for me until it became like when women say like, oh, he 90s fine. I think that's a hell of a compliment too. But like for your, for your daughter's friends, see if your daughter's friends like, girl, your daddy ugly as hell. You got a problem on your hands. If your girl, if, if your daughter's friends ain't, ain't looking at you like, you know what I'm saying? These, these younger ladies looking at Idris Elba, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want that energy. You know what I'm saying? I just... To me, that's what it was. I just wanted to show up picking my baby up and they them thinking she got the coolest daddy in school. But you know, it's 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 still remotely close. Everybody be like, it's Logan's dad, Logan's dad, this, Logan's dad looking at me. I was like, well, looking at you. I was like, you know what I'm saying? I see you. And everybody they was on the bus earlier today, like, he's gonna he's gonna be my my partner next time. He's gonna be my partner next time. I'm like, I'll be everybody's partner next time. You know what I'm saying? Cause I really try to um engage with the children. Like, I, if you know me. I'm big on children for real. All me and Logan do around the house is fucking play Mario, play Roblox, do some homework. You know what I'm saying? It's it's always group activities. It's always, I, I try to never like leave my baby feeling like his daddy ain't present. You know, I was sitting on a bus today thinking like, I hope he know that, I hope he remembers that his daddy was on all these field trips. I hope, I hope he remembers that his daddy was here. His daddy was potent. His daddy was present you know because there's nothing bigger than that but let me tell you about this daughter so let's just call her dakota wiley for the sake of the conversation so miss dakota was supposed to be like a little like carbon copy of this woman that i, I f fell in love with i always wanted that for myself to call it selfish call it greedy but it was a bunch of more reasons let me tell you another one i feel like the presence of a father in a little girl's life can be monumental to who she becomes, to how she see herself and her self assurance and her 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 self value and that self doubt, like you can alleviate all self doubt. I feel like if your daddy treats you like a princess, you'll let no man come into your life and treat you anything less. You understand what I'm saying? If your daddy made sure you already had this, this and that, you're not impressed by a nigga who can only give you this, this and that. You can actually meet a man or meet a young boy and. Find qualities in him that you actually genuinely like. Instead of, you know, doing how this generation is sought to do it and only fucking care for materialistic objects. I feel like to have a father that's present and active and concerned, and I'm trying to be at every parent teacher conference. I'll be on the phone with Logan teacher, like, you know, we 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 talking over these details about how, how Logan can improve. Like that, that's happened. You know, I'm I'm present in class. I'm making sure my baby eat in the morning. I'm making sure, you know, the necessaries are taken care of because to me that's that's what it's about. You know? And just for a little girl to have a father figure. Like in this generation, in this day and age, I, I meet so many people who like, yeah, my dad my dad just wasn't there. So many women, like, I'ma tell y'all how this actual podcast, well this this let me get in, getting things off my chest actually came about. It was actually an accident. I was dating some woman who told me before we ever start dating, she said, I'm a little indecisive about men. She said, because I've never met a man. There hasn't been a man in my life to show me any, any type of consistency, any type of fluidity with their words and their actions. And I told her, this is exactly what I told her. I said, well, you know, if you're a little indecisive about man dating me may not be the best thing for you because I am not only a, a different, I, I like to label myself as a different kind of man. Um, I'm also a very self-aware man and I can, I have a keen ability to help you see yourself. And if a lot of these things you're not ready to see, you know, I look like the bad guy. Or um, it, could, it could also be the fact that you may not believe my word is genuine and me actually speaking these words to you because you've never experienced it genuinely. If you don't know how to love a man, loving a man is going to seem complex when it does come along. And I think that was really, you know, the problem. But 
I was giving this young lady advice after we stopped dating and we had only went on one date, which is, we're going to say one and a half, you know, but um, I was giving this young lady advice about you having to take that moment out to heal and do that self-work so you're not reflecting those past traumas on a good person. So you're not reflecting those past traumas on someone who may be good for you. So, you know, I, um, all I did was take the same little conversation I gave her and I put it online. So if you go back to the very first video, there was no let me get this off my chest. I think I said I just want to put this out here. For, you know, um, there's, a, there's a young man getting himself together for you. And from that perspective, I was speaking on myself. I was speaking of myself because I had been through so much. I knew I was healing for Mrs. Wiley so I could speak it. You understand what I'm saying? I knew I was healing for that future. For not even M-R-S Wiley. M-S Wiley. Miss, the one that come from me. You get what I'm saying? The one that I, I birthed into the world. I was healing for her as well. I'm healing for her as well still. Because healing is a forever journey. But I was doing it for her as well. So when I got online and gave that advice, and then that shit hit like 300,000 the next day, I was in awe. I'm like, damn, you know... I really thought this was like common sense shit. I really thought that, you know, everybody kind of had this idea that, you know, fixing me is going to fix the relationships that come in my life. And it wasn't that. You know, so, but to take it back, for that young woman to have an active father, for have a to have a father who is available emotionally. That, that's the thing. You, you, you can even have a present dad, but if he's not available emotionally, it doesn't really do anything for you growing up as a woman. It doesn't really do anything for you learning as a woman. You being able to self-heal like Wolverine did. You know what I'm saying? You got to have that ability in you. But the thing about it is everything in this life is taught. Everything. Whether it's taught through experience or it's taught through somebody telling it to you. If you don't know how, you won't know how. If you don't learn how, you won't know how. And, and from, from when I was in third grade, like young, young, I'm talking about young, I already knew what I wanted to bring into this world and what effect it would have on that young lady. I knew this then, I swear to, I swear to you. I was like super prevalent about it. And I had a bunch of names. Like I love the name Naomi. I love the name Naomi Wiley. Oh, that sounds so cute. The, like I told you, Dakota Wiley. Um, what other names did I have for a, a young lady? Um, it was really between Naomi and Dakota for me. Um, if I had an opportunity. But even with the birth of my first, with my son, we had agreed that if it was a girl, I had got the name, name the girl. Um, but that's how bad I wanted the girl. I, don't get me wrong. Please don't take from this that I was mad that I had a little boy because I love my son to the moon and back. And he knows this. Because who else I'm going to sit and play Mario with? But understand, if I wasn't playing Mario, I'd be right there playing Barbie. I'd be right there. I would have been right at that Barbie movie. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what an active father does. An active father tries. Not for him, but for that child. Hell yeah. I'd have been in a, I'd have, like I said in the video before, I'll fuck a daddy daughter dance up. I, I'll be in that, mo I can't even, I look, I don't even know too many moves, but I'll be in that bitch. You feel what I'm saying? Like, anything for my baby. Anything to help her feel like a princess right out of that book. So she don't go around expecting it from the world. You don't have to expect it from the world. You know your daddy's going to give it to you. And any man that's not willing to give it to you just doesn't live up to the, to the standards. It's a standard here, mama. It's a standard here. If they don't live up, they don't live up. They don't measure up, they don't measure up. You understand what I'm saying? I see people always be like, you know, it's so much harder to raise a girl. And I'm sure, you know, you got to deal with probably a few, a few more emotions. But the thing about it is I was willing to take on a job. As an emotionally available man, I wanted the job. Sign me up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You know, I, I even told my grandma, like, grandma, this is definitely a girl. I know I'm having a girl, for sure. I was wrong. So grandma, listen, don't call me out that I was wrong. They know I was wrong. I was salty. But I swear to you, when I get in that next relationship, and it's healthy, 
and it's healed and it's progressive. It's pushing forward. Yeah, we get. Yeah, we. Yeah, we. Uh, well, yeah, we. Uh, we. Um, what they say? I'm thinking. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good one. We gonna do that motherfucking. Um, fuck! I can't think of no 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 sex songs. I ain't got one in my head. Probably because I'm sitting there talking about children and shit. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, no, nah, it's going. It's going to. Like that's that's just what I want out of life. If I fall in love, I would love to have a duplicate of that. Because Logan is just like a, a, a me all the way through. He got the same little temper tantrums I had when I was his age. He got the same little, you know, I'm a cuddler, man. I just want to be able to cuddle with my little family. You know, the, the one I created and just like be in that space. I want my I want my daughter to like appreciate matching outfits with her dad and her, and her mom, you know? I want I want Logan to know like Logan want to Logan Logan be treating my ass, I ain't going to lie to you. He told my ass get a girlfriend, he ain't trying to hear it. And you know, that's cool. Cuz it was funny like Logan didn't want me to have a girlfriend at first, but now he like, you know, he need a brother and he always say brother, but if I get another little boy Miss Wiley, we running it back. 9 months in, we 18 months pregnant. We running it back. I don't give a damn. I don't care. Because I will not feel fulfilled on this planet until I have you, little girl. Until I get a little girl. You know? Until I get, like, that little girl I could just... She ain't never coming off my hip. I'm talking about we we glue. Y'all you, you, see me and Logan? Logan's always on the hip. Me and Logan still cuddle. You know, we was cuddling with Yoshi, like, I don't know why you want to bring Yoshi in on our cuddling session, but, you know, like, I don't know. I just take it very, very seriously. I think parenting is one of the, so I just want to, you know, salute all of the great parents out there. There's a ton of great parents. I be seeing so many people. I'm going to bring some parents on a podcast. I'm going to bring some of my favorite parents on so y'all can actually hear them speak. And we're going to call that episode Letter to My Best Friend. And, um... I'm gonna do a deeper dive on Logan so y'all can actually understand this little this little guy. Um, but shout out to all them parents. Because being a parent is not an easy thing. But you know what I told myself when I was young? I want all of parenting. I wanna change pampers. I wanna cook for my baby. I wanna go on field trips. I wanna get the report cards. I wanna just be present, just be active, just be there. I want it all aspects of parenting. I wanna accept the accept the uh Christmas and you got to make sure you buy batteries. I don't really like, you know, having to put all the toys together just so they never play with them again. That aspect kind of sucks. But the the enthusiasm they open these presents with, not when they won, because they won and like smaller than that, they just like push the push the paper around. They don't even care what's in it. They don't care. They're going to take the shiniest thing they see on the floor that day and just pick it up and run with it. But all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, Parenting is like, that's why people ask me, like, what's my non-negotiable? You have to be a good parent. I can't date nobody I don't feel like will be a good mother. If you don't, if you don't have a genuine love for what you've created, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm also one of them parents who believe my child will always have a place to stay as long as I have a place to live. My child could be 50 and I could be 70. I don't I have a, actually, when Logan 50, I'll be like 73, 72, something like that. 70, 70, 73. But, you know, he always going to have a place to live if his pops here. Always. I don't give a fuck. But that's why I work. That's why I do, you know, as much as I do and try to fill up the schedule because my future is big. Not, not for me, but for the love I have to, you know, garner, generate, sustain. I've learned that through all, all of this, you have to be present in love, present in showing your face, present in caring. I talk to my son like he is a, I've always talked to my son just like this, like a grown little guy. And he's talked back to me the same way. He's so smart. And I know, you know, to have a daughter, my heart is just going to be fulfilled. And yes, yes, fuck it. Yes, I have baby fever. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure I do. 
Don't y'all try to make me feel bad for, you know, wanting a no, don't make don't uh-uh. Yeah, I got baby fever. So what? So what? You know, I be, I be, I was on a field trip looking at the little kids like, you know, oh, y'all so cute, so sweet. You know what I'm saying? That I can't wait to have my own little, my own little Miss Wiley running around. That's funny that that would be her name, but that's hilarious. I, I've actually never like put that in perspective. Like she would technically be Miss Wiley too, but I've never actually put that into perspective. But I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm blessed to be even be on a path to work towards that. Like, life can't seem dim to me because I know that's coming. I know marriage is coming. I know engagement is coming. I know buying a house with my significant other is coming. I know I, I wanna I wanna build one and write our favorite scripture on a wall on, on the wood and then put the house around it. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna say Dimitri and Mrs. Blank. You know, blank Mrs. Dimitri Wiley, blank Mrs., you know what I'm saying, Wiley. And it's going to say, plus Logan, and if a child isn't born yet, it's going to say, and all we have to come. And all the love we have to come. You know, like, I look forward to that. And that alone would never have me out here sad. That alone would never have me out here like, that's how I, that's how I, was able to beat depression, to think of what life is going to be like one day. I'm excited as fuck. Just to know that little girl is still going, yeah, hell yeah. I'm excited as fuck for that. I'm going to be the most active father you've ever seen. You know, I can't wait. And I ain't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't really care about the image of it. I don't really care about how it looks. I don't care if I'm a, Man, I will put, if my daughter tell me, put on a motherfucking tutu and come to school with her because she want to wear a tutu, god damn it, I'm in a tutu. I'm in a tutu throwing up gang sound. No, no. I'm in a tutu. You just know, you know, you got to do what you got to do for your baby. And I always will. They always going to know, if nobody loved me right, daddy loved me. If mama didn't know what the fuck she was doing, daddy sure did. Daddy was here. Daddy was active. Daddy was present. And to me, being present it's one of the best things you can ever do for any child. All I'm saying is life itself is going to be so much more bright when that comes along. Let's say, let's say by the end I'm like touring the world doing something. Hopefully music. But if I'm touring the world for music, I want my family there with me the whole time. I want Miss Wiley and I want the little Wileys with me the whole time. However much I can because, you know, Logan me, 50, 50 custody and stuff, you know. But, you know, however we can make it work. And, you know, that was actually a big thing I thought about. Like, if I was to ever have another kid and I was present in that household, would Logan feel like disassociated because he's only there 50% of the time? That weighed heavy on my heart when, like, that split first happened. You know? But I'm not even going to think about it. I let it go. I let, I let the talk go. And I said, as long as you're a present father like you need to be, like you've always been, everything going to work out perfectly. Everything going to be smooth. Right? Because you smooth. No. Everything going to be smooth because it's supposed to be smooth. And um, I don't know, man. I just, I look at everybody with their beautiful families and congratulations. Congratulations. I'm 27. I have a four-year-old, soon to be five this year. Miss Wiley, if we don't bump into each other soon, you know, hey, we got to figure something out, girl, because I'm, I, I want it. I'm ready for it. And uh, we're going to make it happen, you know. But no, nah, I've always wanted a daughter for those reasons, just to provide something to her that this world can always, that this world can never take away from her. That's what it is. That's how you say it. And don't get me wrong, I love my son. I want more, more children. I want more. If I get a daughter, I want another son. Then I want another daughter. Then I want another. Now, if I get twins, okay, boom, we just knocked it out the park. We don't even need no more. But, you know, I, I pray to God I get to have that. I pray to God it's for me. Because God know my heart. God know I want that. But I promise you, I've only ever wanted a daughter to, to fall in love Twice. I didn't know it was possible to fall in love with a little boy until the day I touched him. 
The day I picked him up, that man hit my arms. I said, oh, my God. I said, I will fight the world to make sure this boy is okay. And I will always do that forever and a day for anything that I love. So, you know, um, if you took anything away from this podcast today, hey, big on parenting. And I hope each and every person out there is the same way. Be big on parenting. Make it happen for them kids. If you can't make it happen for nothing else, make it happen for them babies because they didn't ask to be here. You know what you used to tell your mama? I ain't asked to be here, man. Fuck. I ain't even asked to be here. You had me. Same thing you used to tell your mama? Yeah, think about it with them kids. They didn't ask to be here. So be there for them. Constantly. Always. And you know, one day my, my daughter might be able to sit up and watch this. We'll see how long YouTube keep this up. But if you keep it up for about 12 years, she can maybe watch it when she like, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, some shit, shit like that. Yeah, I said 10. Hey, listen. I'm trying to I'm trying to get cracking on that Miss and on that on that little Wiley. You know? So Miss Wiley, big Wiley, come on. Stop stop fucking around, girl. You playing too much. That's the problem. You're playing too much. Damn. But no, um, what can I say? Merchandise constantly being shipped out. Thank you to everybody who went to DimitriWiley.com slash shop and order some merch. I got a new product coming out. It's going to be available for pre-order. I like this one. I designed them all myself, so, you know, we cooking. Uh, what else can I tell you? I'm working on a show soon, and I'd love to know how you guys feel about this down in the comment section. The show itself, I don't know if you guys ever heard of R&B only, but I be getting on TikTok, and all I do is run through the hits, sing the hits. It's going to be a big-ass party, and at the end of the party, for the last hour, I'm, I'm going to perform, and I'm going to do my songs. But that party is going to be for like the first two, two and a half hours. We're going to be playing nothing but the motherfucking hits. I'm going to be like, anybody got anything to say? I'm going to be like, DJ, anybody got something to say? I'm going to ask them, can we talk real quick? Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I want... You know what I'm saying? Like, something like that. And um, it's going to be a fucking ball, though. You know, it's going to be drinking. It's going to be a bar. It's going to be food. It's going to be just a good-ass time, and I get to perform at the end. Y'all let me know if that's how y'all want that show to be structured, because I'm working on it for March. Then I'm working on another one for June and my birthday. I'm trying to make this year crack, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to do some shit. Just tell me y'all got my back and all I'm trying to do, and I'm going to make it happen. Um, I was also talking about a, uh, a Lost Lovers trip. You know what I'm saying? We all meet in like the same, the same like state, go to like a cabin thing or something, and we gone. You know, but um, it's so much beautiful things going on. Um, I'm excited about it all, and I appreciate y'all for being part of it all. Um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I cannot express what you guys have done for me, the joy y'all bought for, done for me. Like, I, I posted a picture, and y'all made me think I was cute. Like, huh? Not that little insecure boy that... Not he think he handsome now. Not they calling him 90s fine. Hold on now. You know what I'm saying? So thank you guys for the confidence. Thank you guys for the reassurance that me being myself is enough. I'm working on some music. Debating on if I should call it more for less volume three or not, but that's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling more for less volume three, so I think that's what it's going to be. Um, what else can I tell you guys? Stay beautiful. Stay, stay, stay yourself. Protect your heart and uh, peace out. This lover boy done fell in love with the finer things. Diamond rings, tennis bracelets on her ankle. I caught me the chain, cause when we fucking, she love in the way it dangles. Say I'm dangerous, she just hooked on the thrill. Her little nigga done became a big deal. Now the checks up front, plus size like big wheels. But still, I need the backing. Turning words into captions, this passion, it makes it happen. Simply talking to niggas, they take it as if I'm rapping. Just better behind the mic like the Jacksons.